What's up, beautiful? Yeah, you're gonna finish eating, you're gonna change your clothes, and then, yeah, you'll come out in a little bit. We'll be outside. Yeah, we're gonna come out in a little bit, mama. It's almost that time. So it's 2023. I got two babies, still slacking on selling sneakers. I've been selling sneakers just at a very slow clip. So it's like God convicts me of idolatry for sneakers, even though it's like I've never seen myself as an idolater, a lover of sneakers. But when it comes time to sell things, it comes time to move things. Like I was never, never quick to just, you know, sell things, right? I don't, I didn't have to do it been having this conversation a lot lately it's like i put myself in a situation where it's like if i don't have to do something i just don't do it right which isn't it's not a good mentality to to be in because you get complacent you get lazy it's very easy to get lazy and get complacent when you don't have to do things for money you don't have to do things for anything you should just do things because you know that it's the right thing to do right which isn't always easy because if you don't have to do it, you're not forced to do it. It's easy to be lazy. It's easy to sit around. It's easy for even me, like right now with my children, it's easy for me to just sit around with my children, not go out and make money, not go out to work, not go out and cause I don't really have to, you know, I own a property, I have a renter, you know, it's enough to at least make our lives pretty, pretty easy, easily maintainable finance, finance wise, you know, I don't have much debt. So it's, I don't have many monthly bills. My biggest monthly bill is, is my children's food, bro. They eat so much. It costs so much just to feed them. Other than that, everything else is like pretty cheap. You know, lights, gas, like I don't even have a gas. I mean, my house is, everything in here is electric. So it's one of those issues, man. But now I'm in the NFT space, which is another distraction. Takes me away from selling my sneakers and doing all that. I've stacked up some good items. I've done pretty decent, you know, in the space. But I noticed how anti, yeah, anti-Christ the space is. It's a very anti-Christ space. Like people are in there just for the money. Um, so much, so many demonic and just ridiculous images of demons. And, and it's not just NFTs, bro. This is what's wild. Like it's definitely very prevalent in NFTs. You come in NFTs, you're gonna see a lot of demonic stuff. People talking crazy nonsense, idolatry galore all of it all for the worship of money of whatever it is they're worshiping claiming it's art it doesn't really matter it's idolatry but i go to my niece's baseball game the other day you know she's 13 years old and one of the one of the team's names of these you know children was the demons it's like that's literally the name of their softball team it's like why like this is how fallen you know how far from from grace we have fallen you know, it's like literally we're taking the devil's terms, we're taking these evil terms and we're putting them right on the chest of children. Like, hey, you're on the demons team. You're the demons. It's like, you don't wanna be a demon, man. You don't wanna, you don't wanna fellowship with demons. You don't want to invite them into your life. But the Bible tells us that that's what a lot of this stuff does. You know, Solomon, greatest king ever, bro. This dude allowed all kinds of demons into his life because of idolatry, you know, because of the worship, because of his, his lust for women and not wanting to rub these women the wrong way, keeping them happy, you know, built altars for their gods and let them worship and pray to their gods. And it is what it is, man. We live in a saint's kingdom. Even on the money it says in God we trust. So you're not, you're not gonna be born in the United States today without touching saints devices. Like it's just not plausible. But what you can do is expose them and let people know, right? Which is what Jesus did. He used money, he spent money. But even let them know, like, look, this, this doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to God. It belongs to Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. This material world, saying can have it. The spiritual world belongs to our Heavenly Father. So it's like everything we do in the spirit should be, do, should be to glorify our Heavenly Father. Like I said, man, I, I fall short every day. You know, I struggle with lust. I struggle with 
you know, the temptations, desires of attraction, all of that nonsense. And it's something that I have to deal with. Um, everybody has to deal with their own, their own sins, their own uh, addictions, their own temptations. It's not about being proud of your sin. It's not about flipping it to say, oh, well, I shouldn't have to live in the closet because I, I like to cheat on my wife. People should just accept that, right? And then you start praying down the streets. It's your pride flags, you know, talking about how you love to cheat on your wife or how you just love to masturbate or how you just love to have sex with animals. Like, that's how messed up this world has gotten. People don't want to see that. They don't want to see that. But literally straight people will argue for gay people. And they're, they're right to march down the street, you know, preaching that pride. Like, if you're gay, man, this isn't a lie to you. This is just, that, that's your struggle. That's your temptation. You have to deal with that, you know? My lustful desires are different, and I have to deal with that. You know, I can't let that get in the way of what the truth is. You know, the truth is, if I, if I succumb to these, you know, temptations, and I let them run my life, and I, and I run to them every day, and I do them every day, like, there's, the Bible tells us, man, God tells us where, where we're headed. It tells us what, you know, what the outcome of our of our final resting state is going to be. It's not good. You know, we have to make every effort to enter that rest. Every ent every effort, you know, to run away and, and shun evil. You know, to get away from it. Expose it. You know, so that others can see it as well. And, and they can start dealing with their own, on their own time. I can't make you stop sinning, man. I can tell you what your sin is. But I can't, I can't make you stop sinning. You know, you can you can look at me and tell me what my sin is, but you can't make me stop sinning. You know, this is this is a personal relationship that each one of us has to go through. Each one of us has to develop. And reading the Bible is it helps. You know, it like really helps because it's not your friends convicting you of sin. It's not your mom. It's not your brother. It's not your friends. It's not you know. It's not people around you that you might want to just call a hater. Or say that, you know, they're just jealous or, or whatever. It's literally the word of God. You know, you're reading these things and you're like, hold up. This is talking about me. And then when you read the outcome of the people that it's talking about, you're just like, I don't want that. I don't want that. You know. It's very, it's very humbling, man. It's very humbling once you really start reading it. You know, accepting it as, as what it is, man. It's, it's truth. You know, whether you like it or not, your feelings don't matter. A lot of people are going to hell because they follow what what a good feeling is. You know, they, they don't want to rub other people the wrong way. So for them, it's, it's just about living life without, without uh, you know, preaching the truth. You know, they might, they might claim they didn't believe the lie, but they didn't expose it neither. And the Bible tells us, man, he's like, if you're a watchman and you're, you're, you're a watchman and this is what God has called you to do and you can see these things coming from far away, it is your job to warn the people. It is your job to warn the people, warn them. Like, I can't make them stop, but I can warn them. I can't stop these people from coming either. I can't stop what's coming. I can only warn you that it is coming. Be prepared for it. Now, if I see it's coming and I'm, I'm warning you about it and you don't prepare for it, then your blood is on your own hands. But now if I see all of this coming and I go and I prepare just for myself and I don't tell everybody else about what's coming and they all get caught up in it, their blood is on my hands. It's on my hands. You know, I'm a sinner and, and I've walked through many valleys of, of shadows of death and only by the grace of God am I still here, right? So by that, I don't fear evil, man. You guys can call me a sinner all you want. Call me a hypocrite. Call me whatever you want to. That's fine. I can deal with that. You know, the only thing I don't want to be called is lawless when I see, you know, our Heavenly Father and His Messiah. I don't want to be called lawless. You know, so know the law, learn the law, live the law, preach the law, teach the law. You know, it's good to be happy, man. It's, it's good to have a good time, man. Life is a blessing, man. This is definitely a blessing. 
but this should not be the only blessing that you will ever know because so much more awaits for us, right? So much more awaits for us, man. Don't let this life be the only heaven you ever know. I'll praise our Heavenly Father, man. No need to like, no need to subscribe, no need to click no notifications, man. Just go out, live your life, repent, seek the way, seek the truth, seek the life. Let's get it, let's grow, y'all. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here in front of us. It's not up there where we have to go and attain it. It's not across the ocean where we gotta go get in a boat, go over there to seek it. It's not, man. It's right here, it's right here. It's right here. I'll praise our heavenly father.